Good morning. Good morning. Let me welcome you to this service of worship and let me invite you to take a moment to share an expression of God's love, grace, and peace with those around you. Long distance, right, right, right. A few announcements I'd uh, let you know about. First of all, some birthdays coming up. Joan Harding, Kay Teedy, and Stephanie Kelly Reese have birthdays today. So happy birthday to them. Um, Binky McQuinn's got a birthday in a few days on the 25th. And Christy Benson, Owen Craighead, and Sarah Todd all share birthdays next Saturday, the 27th. So happy birthday to that esteemed group. Um, Doreen, you're here. Raise your hand enthusiastically. Dorian, Debbie Hammond, there you are. Christy's in the closet. Christy's back over there. I want to say thank you to, they have spearheaded our Thanksgiving basket project this year. Um, you see that you are surrounded by um, gobs and gobs and gobs and cans and cans of, of food that you will, I don't know if you knew this, but um, you will help pack into bags and boxes following the worship service. Really excited about that. Um, but, but to Doreen, Debbie, and Christy, thank you. And for everyone who helped, I know there are people who picked up, deliver, picked up food from, I mean, literally almost everyone in the whole community period has contributed to this from schools to businesses to other charitable organizations. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, let me think, Danny was here. If I could call up Danny and um, Julian and Sebastian. Um, I, we had the team trophy last week. And so the individual trophies came in for the bed races. And so Sebastian and Julian, third place, congratulations. And uh, we got one for Morrow and Jacob, but Danny's is a little extra special. So congratulations to you all. When we see Danny, she'll be here in a minute. Congratulations. Right, that's good, good, good. I wanted to let you know, and, and I can't believe it's uh, December in less than two weeks, but on December 3rd, Friday night, we're going to have a, uh, a sm Smash Brothers Mario Kart tournament here, and we'll use this, and also downstairs, we have another TV, so that'll be going on then. Um, December 4th, which is a Saturday in the morning, we're going to have a, an Advent retreat, and I enthusiastically enthusiastically commend it to you. I'll have more information about that to come, but I just, so you kind of have it on your radar screen for coming up. Um, also in the, I can't believe it's coming up so quickly category. Um, Advent, the season of Advent begins in one week, um, November 28th. And as you might remember, we have people who light Advent candles as part of the liturgies in each Sunday of Advent. So, if you would like to be a part of that, um, I would love your participation. See me sooner rather than later, because we, next week we're going to be doing that as part of our worship service. So I'll plant that seed. Today you might notice there's a red hymnal, the pilgrim hymnal near you, and the blue strength and song hymnal. We'll be using, using both of those. And you might have picked up a prayer request card on the way in. That's a great way to share your prayers when we come to that time of the service. And folks on Zoom, you can share your prayers by way of our Zoom chat. And I'm gonna make some room for our video greeting from the Dezazos. Good morning. This is Pat and Mike Dezazo. After attending Bar Harbor Congregational Church for many years, we became members in April of 2020. During this period of stewardship, we were asked the question, what does the church mean to us? And why support 
Bar Harbor Congregational Church? Well, we feel that Bar Harbor Congregational Church is a community that we belong to, and we feel it's a duty to support a community we're a part of. We feel we belong to a community that shares many of our beliefs, and we enjoy that feeling of belonging. It's a spiritual community that we gain support from and guidance for our faith. Bar Harbor Congregational Church supports the Bar Harbor, Mount Desert community and beyond, all the way to Haiti. But the most important to me is Bar Harbor Congregational Church's programs for children and youth. A famous atheist has said that there are no Christian children, only the children of Christian parents. With our world growing more divisive, I believe it's important to teach children our values and beliefs. It's our duty as a community to teach our children. It takes more than just parents' efforts. Children need to see that the community they're part of shares common values, beliefs, and standards of civil behavior. And these are some of the reasons why we support the Bar Harbor Congregational Church. Thank you. Let me welcome Debbie Dyer, our liturgist this morning. Good morning. I call attention uh, to the announcements in your bulletin of what will take place this week. And it's so nice to see a lot of familiar faces here. I, for one, unfortunately, I have not been able to get here, but, and some people today are here as well. And it's so nice to see us trying to get back into the swing of things. Sign up sheet, uh, when you come through the door, through the parlor, so that um, you can sign up that your name is there. And also, we need liturgists. And if you would like to do this, it's not that difficult. Um, please sign up on the whiteboard in the parlor because Rob would like to have some other people. Um, the special mission offering this month is for the Thanksgiving Basket Project. And I think you can see there's a few things that have been collected in the pews in the church. And um, stick around after worship today because they, you can help pack these Thanksgiving baskets that, that are going to. Do we have an idea, Deb, of how many people will be benefiting? About 150 people will be benefiting. 150 households, should I say. Share your offering uh, in the plate. For those that don't know, we do not collect the offering now. As you come through into the parlor, there is the dish there on the table. So your offering is accepted there um, in the parlor. Who's this? Bar Harbor. Oh. Literature. I... Please join us in singing the uh, our introit, All Beautiful, uh, The March of Days.
Gracious and peace to you from God, who blesses us with every spiritual blessing. Who loves us so much that we are called beloved. Who has prepared an inheritance that will never spoil or fade. who comforts us in our troubles so that we can comfort others. They, uh, please remain standing for the first hymn, which is Come Ye Thankful People Come. Number 462. creatures great and small, we sing your goodness. For in the harvest of land and ocean, in the cycles of the seasons, and in the wonders of each creature, you reveal your loving kindness. Rekindle in us the gratitude that dispels worry, that we may honor each gift as you cherish creation, and praise you with our lips and in our lives. Amen. Please be seated. It's a special morning for many, many reasons. And one of them is we finally get to gather together and celebrate those who have been members of this church for over, for 50 years or more. And we've got a, quite a list of folks. Um, what I'd like to do is rather than have everybody come up, if, as I say your name and um, Actually, Katie, would you mind helping me? If I had maybe one other person help, we will bring a carnation to recognize and celebrate you. Oh, and Scott, great. Thanks, Katie and Scott. So if you guys grab carnations. And you don't have to stand up, but if you, uh, as I call your name, if you want to just simply raise your hand. And the first name I'm going to call is Gertrude Riddle. Don't be shy. <laughs> And folks on Zoom, um, I know we have some of you 50-year uh, members on Zoom too. So um, we're gonna wave, I'm gonna wave on behalf of everybody to, to celebrate you as well. So yeah, Katie, you wanna give your mama, I mean, you wanna give your grandma, a, um, yeah, awesome. And Martha Hobbs, she's been on Zoom every week since the whole pandemic. So Martha, go oh, yay, yay, good, good. Norma Sperling.
glorious soul is down in Florida. Dottie Robbins. I know you're there. You are. And Connie Shea, I don't see her this morning. Debbie Dyer. I will tell you that when I was a small child, and we had the moving nativity here on the chancel, I was an angel. <laughs> <laughs> I need to see photographic evidence. Um, <laughs> Dick Fox. <laughs> Donna Bird Hutton. Kathy McLeod. She might be zooming. Lois Wade. Marjorie Beam, Crystal Beam Dow, Richard Reckholtz in the back row. <laughs> Jefferson Hobbs may also be on Zoom. Yeah, there, there's a raising. Lori Riddle. Lori must have joined prenatally. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Vicki Bentz. I know she had hoped to be here today, but her father passed away. Robert Reckholtz. And I wanted to acknowledge Cecil Sprague, who uh, is has been a 50 year member of our church. He passed away just a little over a week ago. And right before he passed, we were able to acknowledge his membership as well. Let's join in our litany of affirmation. And I have one other presentation. We gather to celebrate the diverse gifts and years of service given by the members of Bar Harbor Congregational Church. Each person has contributed their time and talents, their wisdom and prayer to our ministries together to the work of Christ in this church, in our communities, and in God's world. We have different gifts, but the same God-given ability to all of us. The Spirit's presence shines in and through each of us for the good of all. We are called together as Christ's body, one body with many parts. If one part suffers, all suffer with it. If one part is praised, all share its joy. All of us are Christ's body, and we each are a part of it. For all the gifts and abilities and services, for years of dedication and faithfulness, we say Alleluia and Amen. And I have, I have an angel who was eager to find these pins, which are pins recognizing the 50 years of membership. It's my pleasure to extend one to Lori and to Richard. I'm not gonna throw it. Thank you. I'd invite you to Stand and join in singing this hymn for living saints who labor bravely on.
Our service continues with a time of prayer. I'd invite your prayers. Uh, if you have a prayer request card, I'll collect it in a little bit, and folks on Zoom can begin to share your prayers by way of our chat. We continue in prayer for those whose names we've lifted up already. For Ada, Darlene, Nicole, Lori, Carl, Lee, Ann, Sue, and Rusty. For Gertrude, Levi, Ginny, Andrea, Carrie, Tiffany and Pam, Christar, John, Sandy, Ben, Isabella. We pray for Helen and Joe, Heather and Chris, for Jake, Bob, Cynthia, Jeff, Linda, Mike, Buzz, and Sal. For Cindy, Marilyn, Donna. We pray for our friends in Haiti, for the missionaries in Haiti, and for our community life centers in Haiti. We seek God's consoling spirit for all who have suffered losses recently. For the families and communities of Tom Behrens, Chris Holliday, Cecil Sprague, and Estelle's brother, Gerard. We continue together in the spirit of prayer. Great God who calls us to belonging, who delights in curiosity and ingenuity, who rejoices when hearts and hands work together in loving service. In this grateful season, we join our voices in songs of praise. Praise be for courage and patience, for hope and peace. Praise be for minds that seek, for bodies that care, and spirits that inspire. Praise be for neighbors whose greetings cross the space between us, and for strangers who signal kindness. Praise be for children who ask questions, for truth tellers who earn our trust and speak to our fear. Praise be for friends who tend and encourage, and for teammates and castmates who together are greater than the sum of our parts. Praise be for those who guide and encourage us, for human warmth that spans distances great or small. Praise be. Our cups of blessing overflow, and we take a moment to acknowledge all that comes to us beyond our own effort or orchestration. For the work and witness of those who tend the needs of others, those who shine the light of sacred love, those who lift our eyes from discouragement to hope, for the roof that shades from the sun, the walls that shield from the storm, the bed that warms in the night. Praise be. Christ, our companion, you meet us in the wilderness of our days and fill us with the bread of life. When you meet us in the desert of loneliness, streams of living water start to flow. We drink deeply the gift of your presence. Take our weariness and send your Holy Spirit to renew us. Take our fears and grow new courage in us. Take our acquiescence to the way things are and pull us into your extravagant, relentless, transforming love. Mend our brokenness, ease the burden of our grief, restore our fractured relationships, and heal whatever afflicts our bodies, minds, or spirits. We lift up these prayers for those we love and for ourselves. But we know that grace isn't something we hoard, but something we extend. Likewise, justice isn't something we claim for ourselves without also seeking it for others. And so with anxious hearts, we pray for justice. That people of all creeds and colors might not fear for their lives that where someone lives, what they look like or whom they love would not kindle hatred. 
We pray for an end to brandishing weapons as intimidation and for an end to killing with impunity. We pray for strength to guard our thoughts, our speech, and our actions. For we realize that the more readily we arm ourselves, the more we find opportunities to attack. We pray for communities and people steeped in violence and despair. We pray for peacemakers and leaders of vision, integrity, and wisdom. We pray for decisions and policies that benefit the many, not the few. We pray for deeper concern and concerted action to help both neighbor and creation. Shape our lives, God of life and hope, whenever and wherever we go astray. Open our hearts to your spirit until your glory is revealed in relentless love and communities transformed by justice and compassion and in the making whole all that is torn asunder. We rest in your embrace, offering the prayers of our hearts, whether in silence or out loud, by way of our chat or through our prayer request cards. Pray for Claudette, for Carol who fell and broke her hip, and for Robert who fell and broke his neck. Pray for family Joanna and Sarah who are traveling and gathering for Thanksgiving amid weather and COVID concerns. We pray to heal the wounds of social injustice. To your love, O oh God, we entrust all for whom we pray. And our prayers, both spoken and unspoken. Together we pray as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us sing our response. Today's scripture reading um, is Psalm 126, and if you're following along in the Bible in the pews, it's on page 499. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongues with shouts of joy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, we rejoice. 
Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the water courses in the Negev. May those who sow in tears reap with shouts of joy. Those who go out weeping, bearing the seed for sowing, shall come home with shouts of joy, carrying their sheaves. The second reading is from Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 through 33, and may be found on page 787. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. It is not life, is not life more than food and the body more than clothing. Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly father feeds them. Are you not more value than they? And can any of you by worrying add a single hour to your span of life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothed the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore, do not worry saying, what will we eat? Or what will we drink? Or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive for all of these things. And indeed your heavenly father knows that you need all these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. Here ends the lesson. Before I begin, let me mention that I saw a few other members of our famous bed race team come in. So Mauro, congratulations to you. Jacob, you can run. Then I, and I have something for you to give to Danny. Danny rode on the bed. So Danny gets an extra big trophy. <laughs> no, I'm not throwing it. I'm having Jacob. <laughs> Let us pray. Loving grace, we ask your presence to be among us and within us, that we can hear your words of love and hope and renewal. In your name we pray. Amen. Let's do this. Turn to someone near you and tell them something you saw someone do this week to help someone else. Something specific. Folks on Zoom, type it in the little chat. I'll give you a minute. Ready, go. Oh. Jot down anything you might, I just need one or two, then there. Come on, you guys. All right, good. 10 seconds. Oh, that's too fast. Just one or two is good. I think Robin wins. Okay, all right. Christy, giving or getting? Okay, I've got a few uh, results in. Let me hear a couple. Just shout them out and I'll repeat it. Make sure everybody can hear and the folks on Zoom too. Yeah, Julian. Oh, no, that isn't. That's Wendy. Sorry. You know what? I can't hear very well. Go ahead. You got to spend three wonderful hours with Ted Bromage. Was that a gift from him or from you? 
Both and. Yeah. Oh, nice. Good. What else? A couple more. Two more. Thanksgiving baskets. Yeah, okay. Anything else? Oh, Robin. Robin's brother-in-law donated a kidney this week. Oh my gosh. Oh, this is this. I, uh, I noticed someone sitting with someone um, looking through old pictures and reminiscing. It was really tender and beautiful. Now there's a part two. Turn to someone near, near you, same person, different person, it doesn't matter. And tell them something you did this week to help someone else. Something specific. Oh, I'm hearing the groans already. This is so funny. It's a, it's a harder ask. I know. I'm giving you a little bit of emotional preparation time. It's a harder ask, I know. But yes, I mean it. So let's take a deep breath, everybody. And go. Ten more seconds. <laughs> this time, I won't ask you to repeat it. But instead, let's do this. Let's take another deep breath. And as a, as a way of offering a silent prayer of praise. For courage and kindness, for love and action. Earlier this week, I had a chance to brag about our congregation, how amazing it is to have such a collection of incredibly capable, compassionate, devoted people doing God's work in our community and beyond. Consider all that has gone on in this church in just the last couple of weeks. There's the window insert project, which still has some window inserts over there. The backpack program every Friday, open table on Mondays, Tuesdays, MDI food access projects, Thursdays, Fridays, Saturdays, Thanksgiving baskets in which we are immersed. The bed race. I'm going to milk that cow, I'll tell you. And so much more. I did want to mention the, the, bas the, um, the backpack program and mention Vicky, who's the co-director of it, and Renee Labor from the high school who orders, collects, and puts away all the food that we get. Um, Carol, um, Carol Pepler and Steve Munger help distribute the food to the schools. Sophia, Coleman, and Harriet as well, and all of our partners in school staff and administration. They uh, just pulled off in the last month or so, as you might know, a, a big and important fundraiser raising over $20,000 while packing and delivering 60, 70, 80 boxes of food a week. So that's just one of the, consider the backpack program or consider open table. You wanna see the church humming? Come by on Tuesday afternoon around 4.30 where there's a line of folks down the ramp waiting to pick up some delicious meals down the ramp into the parking lot. Come by on Monday and Tuesday when the kitchen is humming or on Saturday mornings when the boxes go out for delivery with the food access project. And I don't need to tell you about the Thanksgiving basket project. You're in the thick of it. Dozens from all over the community pitching in. And in just a few minutes, you'll get the chance to back boxes as well. Today feels a bit like Christmas. This overwhelmingly joyous sense of community and and generosity. George Bailey running down the streets of Bedford, Seneca Falls, hugging people. The sense of God's presence re-energizing our spirits as we turn our hearts and hands outward in loving service. It's just one of the many tangible ways and visible ways our church is blessed to overflowing. And I'm grateful beyond words. Praises be. 
That's but just some of what happens in and through our church. And this morning, I'd like to focus on what you shared just a couple minutes ago. Truth is, when I said I was bragging about the church last week, I was thinking about these more subtle, more quiet things, the ways you live out your faith every day. And whether you've been here one time or a hundred, I'm talking about you. In today's scripture, Jesus encourages us to move from a place of worry to a place of wonder. I'd like to focus on two moments in particular in today's scripture. First, when Jesus says, consider the lilies of the field. It's an invitation to turn our gaze outward from worry to wonder, from self to others. Second, when he says, seek ye first, and our chorus joined. It too is an invitation to reprioritize from distraction to purpose, and again, from self to others. Most of all, I feel overwhelmingly grateful that these two invitations are ones that you all not only know about, but accept readily and often. Invitations that shape your choices and your life. Consider the lilies. Today, I want to celebrate the ways that each of you lives out your faith in your everyday lives, whether in what you do and sim or simply in who you are. Today, I want to consider the lilies of the field, the ways that God has decorated our lives with the gift and inspiration of one another. I imagine that you, many of you are quick to scoff or shrug. Oh, it's not that much. He must be talking about the person next to me, not me. But I want you to sit for a moment in that uncomfortable place knowing that I'm talking about you. Expressing gratitude and praise for the ways you go about being and doing you. Yes, you. I won't name any names, don't worry, to protect the innocent. But let me invite you to hold on to it just long enough to try it on for size. So many of you do this so often, whether in your work or in your family life, your volunteer commitments, or even in how you orient yourself toward hope in the midst of discouraging and disorienting times. You listen attentively, you teach patiently, you care compassionately, you welcome extravagantly, you tend diligently, you assist respectfully, you advocate wisely, you speak courageously, you help willingly, you love kindly. I've seen you support your kids through disappointment and support other people's kids too. It's not either or. I've seen you readying to head back home when you notice something out of place or you hear someone asking for help and you turn and lend a hand. I've heard how you set up meal trains or provide rides for appointments, strike up attentive conversations and open your hearts to people you barely even know. This week, I learned about someone who has supported a friend and neighbor through their grief with regular check-ins. I learned about someone, how someone goes out of their way to help their peers when they're stuck. I heard about the joy someone derives from their new teaching job. Through the gleam in your eyes, I've seen over and over again and again how doing something for others can move us from inertia toward hope. From time to time, I've also had the privilege of glimpsing some of you at your work, and it's so much fun to see each other outside in our everyday lives. I've seen how your work reflects your spirit and your faith, a faith that calls us to love our neighbors as ourselves, even when there are too many neighbors in town all at once. I admire both your skill and integrity, how you relate your small picture kindness with your big picture vision, of a world infused with grace. I say all this and generalize it somewhat because it occurred to me that the bulk of the ministries of our church take place outside our walls. Even with all that goes on here, and as you know, it's a long list, 
with all the visible and tangible stuff I mentioned before. Imagine if we could capture all of what you do and who you are. How many more boxes of love we could fill. Our sanctuary would burst. So darn right I'm grateful for each and every one of you, for who you are and for the ministries you share, some of which are known only to you. I thank God for you and I praise God for you. You are indeed a blessing. To consider the lilies of the field on this Thanksgiving Sunday morning means to take time to notice what God is already up to in us, through us, and especially among us. Lifting our eyes from worry to wonder, from the needs of self to the gifts of others. And then Jesus says, seek ye first. And tying up his message, he says, seek first the kingdom of God. The message interpretation reads like this. Steep your life in God reality, God initiative, God provisions. What might this look like? Several years ago after church, on a terrifically rainy uh, late spring day, a couple in our church came in through the ramp, up the ramp into the parlor about 20 minutes after worship ended, apologetic. They'd intended to come to church. They were on their way and driving. But along the way in the pouring rain, they'd seen someone in a wheelchair thumbing a ride into town. So they picked him up, dried him off, brought him to town, shared some coffee, helped him get warm and dry, and then came by hoping we could help find him a place to stay. What struck me about all this was their apology, that they'd missed church. I appreciated their sentiment, but didn't they just do church? Didn't they just seek first the kingdom of God? Don't get me wrong. I'd love to encourage, encourage folks to participate in our worship together as often as we can, right? But to show such compassion, to notice those whom it is so easy to overlook, that is our worship. Jesus himself healed on the Sabbath and the righteous people became indignant. Let me point out that this situation presented itself while they were on their way to church. So perhaps in the future, if you might be wondering how to achieve this um, enlightenment, it's a good idea to head on over to church just in case that might happen to you along the way. So often we have choices, A or B, right or left. Jesus invites us to consider which choices lean on God and lean toward God's purposes. When Jesus says, seek first the kingdom of God, I'm grateful that so often you do this, you recognize compelling human need, and you respond. In our gathering today are those who have been members of this congregation for as many as 70 years. You have seen so much during this time. Flood tide and ebb tide, upheavals and joys, both large and small. New programs, pastors that come and go. Through it all, you've rolled up your sleeves and worked side by side, and you have shared your love, your devotion, and your prayers. Let me say that your gift for patient kindness is what allows us to continue to adapt in these times. I'm humbled by your devotion, grateful for your presence, and eager for your wisdom as we navigate this unique set of challenges in which we find ourselves. I've said a couple of times this week that having pews half filled with cans of food would cause some churches to lose their gourds. But like the pragmatism of wearing fleece in Maine just about any day of the year, you take it in stride and figure that we'll make it work. Thank you for extending your trust that though things may change, God is still leading and calling us together. When we're overwhelmed, when it's all too much for any one of us to hold up or hold together, when the waves of worry threaten our buoyancy, 
remember Christ's invitations. To consider the lilies of the field, the gifts and graces of those around us, and to seek first the kingdom of God, lifting our eyes from worry to wonder. In what I hear as an extended metaphor on this theme, Wendell Berry writes this poem. When despair for the world grows in me and I wake in the night at the least sound in fear of what my life and my children's lives may be, I go and lie down where the wood drake rests in his beauty on the water and the great heron feeds. I come into the peace of wild things who do not tax their lives with forethought of grief. I come into the presence of still water. And I feel above me the day blind stars waiting with their light. For a time I rest in the grace of the world and am free. Amen. Bye. That's right, huh? <laughs> Surrounded by hundreds of cans and boxes. This huge expression of trust in our capacity to bless and nourish. We have gathered in an abundance that all may share a feast of plenty and all may find a place at God's table of grace. Let us sing our praise. Giving God, source of every good thing, light and love come from you. You breathe life into us through the power of your Holy Spirit. In response to your generosity, we dedicate these gifts to the work of your kingdom here on earth, that they may be blessed and directed wisely, that your love may be known widely. As we dedicate this offering, we dedicate ourselves to you, El. Bless and direct us that our hands may reach out in service, our feet may walk in the paths of reconciliation, and that our words may sow peace. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Our hymn is Leaning on the Everlasting Arms, which is in the Blue Strength and Song hymnal.
eyes of our hearts be open to all the blessings which surround us. May this awareness produce a harvest of generosity in our spirits. May thankfulness rise up within, not just during this short season, but day after day, from the early morning watch until we rest at night. May our prayers reflect gratitude while acknowledging the needs of others whose situations may be so different. May the compassion of Christ fill our minds and the thirst for God inspire our souls and love for the Lord guide our speech and our actions. May the grace, peace, and love of God protect, defend, and strengthen us to run with perseverance the race set before us. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.